Let's turn now to the presidential election. A new poll from Marquette University Law School showing Vice President Harris opening up a six-point lead among likely voters over the former president. And with her campaign now just three weeks in, we want to dive a little deeper into some of the policies from Vice President Harris that could impact the broader economy. So joining us now on set, we've got to welcome in our very own Rick Newman. Rick, always a treat to have you in person with us. So let's start on the macro economy. What are the biggest potential policy positions she could could put into place if she makes it into the White House come November again, I guess, um, that could impact the macro environment? I, I mean, the starting point is that she represents the Biden administration. Mm -hmm. So it has been the Biden-Harris administration. So on most things, she basically supports Joe Biden's policies um, implicitly anyway. And she has, she has been actually, I think, pretty careful not to talk very much about policies because things are going her way as they are. Uh, you know, she's getting criticism for not doing any press conferences or any media interviews. But look what's happening in the polls. I mean, you just mentioned that poll where she's up 6% in one poll over Trump. I mean, that is a gigantic flip in what's been happening. And if you look at the aggregate of all polls, she has gone from considerably behind Trump to now slightly ahead of, I mean, that is just a gigantic movement. And we haven't even gotten to the convention yet or the so-called convention bump where you dominate prime time for four nights and then everybody says, oh, I'm paying attention now. Maybe I like these people more than I thought. So momentum is going her way. So the real question is, where does she differ from Joe Biden? Um, and if, if there's any place where she might be more emphatic than Biden, it's on what people call the care economy. Um, per, you know, uh, care, which is um, families, stuff that supports families. Um, so she might push harder for expanding the child tax credit, for example, which w was in place for a while as part of COVID relief, but that expired. Interesting that she, um, she chose um, Tim Walls, whose main thing he's known for in Minnesota is free lunch for all kids in public schools. She supports stuff like that. So she might push harder for those. Biden supports that kind of stuff too. But you remember he had this whole agenda to build back better. There was all, everything under the kitchen sink was in there. And um, he have to pick and choose. So I mean, she might emphasize these things more. And Rick, while we have you, you also have a recent column out on what exactly a Harris presidency, a Trump presidency would, would mean for the national debt. Doesn't sound like it means anything positive here <laughs> under both. Okay, my, my question to the audience, does anybody care about the national debt? And not, well, not I just, heard you got a heck of a lot of comments okay, on your not, article. That not was just do you too. care about it as an issue, because yeah. yeah, people definitely read these stories, but are you, here's what everybody wants. They care about the national debt, but they, th they think somebody else should pay to fix right. the problem. Everybody's like, no, raise taxes on the wealthy, don't touch my benefits or anything. I'm a Social Security, Medicare enrollee. No, don't touch my benefits. Make somebody else pay for it. The fact is, um, everybody is going to have to give up a little something by, and by the time we address this problem. And that's why it doesn't get addressed, because no politician can tell voters, oh, in order to address the debt, I'm going to trim Social Security benefits and we're going to reformulate Medicare or something like that. So to just get to the point, um, Trump wants to cut taxes by extending all the 2017 tax cuts. That's about $6 trillion added to the national debt based on the baseline now. Kamala Harris wants to do some other tax cuts. She would add about $5 trillion to where we are right now. So both candidates, based on what they say they want to do, only going to push the debt upward. Which is probably why we haven't heard a heck of a lot about it from either candidate, too. No, you won't, because you won't. the, because the trade-offs suck. All right, Rick, there we go. <laughs> Sum it up in just that one line. Rick Newman, always great to have you here on set. Thanks so much for hopping on with us.